Hello folks and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing something completely different from usual. Instead of giving you a complete war thunder guide, I'll give you a pure historical overview of an aircraft we don't have in game. I do plan on making this uh, a full series, a regular series, so please let me know if you are interested in that. The focus of today's video is the Nakajima C6N Sayun carrier reconnaissance plane, a beautiful three-seater that certainly deserves more attention than it gets. And in order to understand the C6N, we need to take a small look into how the Japanese operated their fleets, particularly their carriers. The main striking force of fleet carriers in the Imperial Japanese Navy were combined into one big unit, the famously known Kiryu Butai of First Air Fleet. Instead of every single carrier division operating as their own, they would group up their air fleets and subsequently attack as a single massive air fleet. This revolutionary system made the Japanese carrier fleet the most advanced in the world at that time and played a crucial role in the early victories of the Imperial Japanese Navy during the Pacific War. However, this system was not without its faults and some could argue that reconnaissance was part of that. While the carriers themselves could and would operate reconnaissance aircraft from time to time, this was not their main role. Instead, the task of reconnaissance was given to two separate kinds of aircraft. First were cruiser-operated float planes. Japanese cruisers were some of the fastest in the world, and they would usually scout ahead of the main fleet, deploying their float planes to search large areas in front of the Kido Butai. These were the eyes and ears of the fleet. It went so far as that the Tone class of heavy cruisers were specifically designed for these sorts of operations, giving up their rearmost turrets for a big float plan handling facility, complete with two catapults and six float planes. The other heavy cruisers, like the Mogami or Takao class, carried two or three aircraft as well. And this really shows the weakness of the system. There were just too few reconnaissance birds available. The heavy cruiser divisions were often tasked with their own missions, meaning that only a handful of cruisers with their float planes were available at any time, and even then only two of these ships were dedicated scout cruisers. This type of operation also limited the cruisers in protecting the carriers with their anti-aircraft fire, although it was initially thought that the cap would take care of any intruders. The second type of aircraft used for reconnaissance were large multi-engine flying boats like the H6K and H8K both built by Kawanishi. They boast a tremendous range in patrol capabilities, but they were not in the direct control of the carriers and in any case too few of these machines were available at any given time. For example, only 167 H8K Emilys and 250 H6K Mavis were built throughout the war. Compare this to over 3,300 PBY Catalinas alone. This left the carriers without much capable reconnaissance of their own. Unlike the US Navy, which uh, for example used their SPD Dauntless dive bombers as scouts and had all other sorts of reconnaissance capabilities, the only dedicated reconnaissance aircraft found on the ships of the Kido Botai were the few examples of D4Y1Cs, and these were only operated as such because they were found to have structural problems preventing them from their intended use as dive bombers. The poor performance of Japanese reconnaissance aircraft and their spotting during the Battle of Midway, part of it being just too few of them being sent out, was a major contribution to the disastrous loss of four fleet carriers that day. It also became apparent that the float planes operated were becoming more and more vulnerable. Most of the cruiser operated aircraft didn't stand a chance if fighters opposed them, many of them being biplanes. And while the Japanese did deploy their long range torpedo bombers as scouts, their performance in the reconnaissance role was certainly unsatisfactory. A much more capable aircraft was therefore needed, one that could outrun any pursuers and have enough range. The need for such an aircraft had actually been identified earlier in 1942 already, 
and the disaster at Midway certainly bolstered this undertaking. This resulted in Specification 17G, calling for a high-speed, long-range, free-seat reconnaissance aircraft that was to be fully carrier-capable. Top speed was specified to be 648 km per hour at 6000 meters. Time to this altitude, not more than 8 minutes, with a range of 1500 miles, that's 2780 km, without external fuel tanks, and with external fuel tanks, range rose to 2500 miles, that's 4630 km. The aircraft was also limited in size to current carrier elevators. These were very demanding design specs, and the company tasked with designing such an aircraft was Nakajima Hikoki Kabushiki Kaisha, one of the leading aircraft companies from Japan during that time. Nakajima built some of the most famous Japanese aircraft of World War II, and is in fact still alive and kicking today, although you probably know it under a different name, Subaru. But that's a story for another time. Anyways, Nakajima were the right people for the job, with two of the designers, Yasuo Fukuda and Yoshizo Yamamoto, responsible for designing the new aircraft. The internal project number went under the name N50. The most difficult task was to provide the power for the aircraft to reach its design speed. No engine at that time was powerful enough to propel such a large aircraft up to that speed on its own so a twin-engine solution was initially pursued. And this saw two engines of around 1000 horsepower fitted into a narrow fuselage in tandem, driving wing-mounted propellers via extension shafts. With the advent of Nakajima's own H45 Homare engine, this idea, however, was quickly dropped in favor of a more conventional design. The Homare was an 18-cylinder development of the 14-cylinder Zake that powered the famous A6M0. The additional four cylinders gave the engine tremendous power output without being much larger than the engines preceding it. The expected power output was 1800 to 1900 horsepower, with the engine itself being only 118 cm in diameter, a mere 3 cm bigger than the 115 cm Zake. This compactness made the engine light and gave it a very good specific power output, but it also meant the engine was difficult to service internally and early models didn't nearly pump out as much power as was specified at altitude. Reliability was also an issue initially, although the Homare would, in, would mature into one of the most important aircraft engines Japan built during the second half of World War II. The new design draft now featured a long tubular fuselage, no larger in diameter than the engine cowling, with a three-seat cockpit, the three aircrew being positioned in tandem to keep the diameter as small as possible. The observer sat in the middle and had several viewports, while the radio operator also functioned as a gunner for the single 7.7mm machine gun and could operate free photo reconnaissance cameras. The designers drew experience from their recent B6 and 10 San torpedo bomber, similarly angling the tailplane to the front as to allow more tighter aircraft packing in the hangars of the carriers and to keep the dimensions of the aircraft in line with carrier elevator dimensions. To make landing on carriers easier, the laminar flow wing of the aircraft was fitted with slats and fowler flaps that enlarged the aircraft's wing area, allowing for more lift and lower landing speeds. 1350 liters of fuel could be carried internally, giving the aircraft tremendous range, and the tail hook was fitted as standard to the aircraft. A wooden mock-up was first presented in August of 1942 and was immediately approved for production. The first prototype was fitted with a Homare 11 engine of 1825 horsepower and first took to the sky on the 15th of May 1933, displaying a most impressive 639 km/h in clean condition. Unfortunately, the Homare engine was not very satisfactory initially losing power at altitude, barely managing 1300 horsepower at the altitudes the Sayun was intended to operate. This led to a rather large number of prototypes and pre-production aircraft, all testing various engine and propeller arrangements, with some Sayuns featuring a 4 bladed prop and different versions of the Homare engine. After no less than 19 prototypes and pre-production aircraft, 
The final solution was the fitment of the 2000 horsepower Homare 21 engine with a free-bladed Sumitomo propeller, and while the engine would remain somewhat troublesome at times, the aircraft completed its acceptance trials and was ordered into production as the carrier-based reconnaissance aircraft C6N1, the C designating a reconnaissance aircraft, the 6 identifying it as the 6th aircraft of this type, N the producer Nakajima, and the 1 the first version of the aircraft. The pre-production aircraft completed some initial combat trials in the spring of 44 over the Marianas with the 121st Kokutai and boasted excellent performance. The type formally entered uh, production in the summer of 1944 as the C6N1 Model 11. Unfortunately, by the time the C6N1 was entering production and service, the carriers that the aircraft was intended to operate from were mostly sunk. The Sayun was envisioned to operate from the new Taiho class of aircraft carriers, however only a single ship of that class, the magnificent IJN Taiho, was completed and she would sink in her first combat sortie during the Battle of the Philippine Seas in June of 1944. The Unryu class carriers were also intended to be capable of operating Sayuns, but never did so during their very short career. The C6N measured 11 meters in length and had a wingspan of 12.5 meters, and fully loaded it could weigh over 5 tons. This, combined with the fact that the wings were non-foldable, prohibited its use from smaller escort carriers. By the time the C6N was entering full service, Japan had lost almost all of its carriers, limiting the C6N to be flown from land-based units. In fact, it seems that Sayuns were never used operationally on any of Japan's carriers. Nevertheless, the new type soon proved its worth. The Sayun was one of the fastest Japanese aircraft over the Pacific skies and was invaluable in providing fast and accurate reconnaissance. Even with full military equipment, the Sayun managed a top speed of 610 km per hour, making it one of the fastest Navy aircraft in the Japanese arsenal. And keep in mind that Japanese fuel was of lower octane than the ones used by Americans, so a Sayun with proper high octane fuel was even faster. Its high speed made the Sayun very difficult to intercept. Indeed, the standard US Navy fighter, the F 6F Hellcat, managed a top speed of around 630 km per hour max, so intercepting a C 6N1 was frustratingly difficult for Hellcat pilots. This is exemplified by a famous radio call from a, crew, from a Sayun crew reading, No Grummans can catch us. Indeed, the only US naval fighter that was able to catch a Sayun was the F4U Corsair. The aircraft, given the codename Myrt by the Allies, was somewhat of a nuisance to American ships, since they could detect the fast-flying Sayuns on their radars, but were otherwise not really able to do much against them. This made the Sayun one of the most valuable aircraft to the Japanese, and therefore only few examples were used in kamikaze raids. Despite all that, a Sayun became the last Japanese aircraft to be lost in World War II, when Thomas Hamill Reedy, commander of VBF-83 from the carrier USS Essex, shot down a C-6N over Tokyo in his F4U Corsa at 5.40 in the morning on August 15, 1945 just five minutes before the war's official end. Its impressive speed caused the Sayun to be considered for other types of operation as well, and a number of further studies were undertaken to see what else the aircraft could be used for. This resulted in a number of variants and proposals. First, C6N1B was a proposed torpedo bomber variant. This was a somewhat straightforward idea, since the auxiliary fuel tank the base model could equip was roughly torpedo shaped, so it's not difficult to see where the idea of torpedo bomber Sayun might have come from. However, the idea was rather quickly dropped. Not only were there close to no carriers left that could take advantage of such an aircraft, but the Navy already had a potent torpedo slash dive bomber available in the form of the Aichi B7A Ryose, a far more capable aircraft for that job. Its large canopy and cockpit and high speed also made the Sayun seemingly suitable for night fighter operations. Five Sayuns were fitted with two 20mm cannons with 100 rounds per gun 
and at least a single one mounted a 30mm Type 5 cannon in a schräge Musikstyle arrangement, replacing the rear gunner's position. Japanese night fighters lacked modern radars, however, and this was no different on the few night fighter conversions of the C6N. This, together with a poor climb rate and limited performance at high altitude, made the so-called C6N1S a disappointing night fighter. The 30mm armed version did fly a single sortie with pilot Hiroshi Yauda and Ensign Taro Fukuda as his observer. This single mission was flown on the night of August 1st, 1945, and they intercepted a US Army Air Force B-29, and while 10 rounds were fired at the target, the outcome of the battle uh, remains unknown. An improved model, designated C6N2, was to further enhance the type's power and altitude performance by fitting a turbo supercharger to its Homare engine. The so-called NK9KL Homare 24RU, with the RU suffix ident identifying it as a turbo supercharged engine, gave the aircraft better performance at altitude and higher top speed. This type was nevertheless only limited to prototype form, the aircraft being test flown in early 1945. As with all Japanese turbochargers of the time, they proved to be unreliable. This was a problem Japan as well as Germany faced due to a lack of high quality alloys needed for such turbocharger installations. C6N326 were further projects with different engine and armament configurations as well as studies as to see how non strategic materials could be incorporated into the design, but none of these could be realized before the war came to an end. All in all, 463 Sayuns were built. The Allied tested a number of these fast reconnaissance aircraft, and one Sayun, in fact one of the night fighter conversions, is still stored at the Paul E. Gawa Preservation, Restoration and Storage Facility. It is, to my knowledge, the last surviving Sayun anywhere in the world. And with that, we come to an end to this video. So, yeah. Please um, write in the comments uh, if you would like to see more of these sorts of pure historical guides to the aircraft. And I will then see you in the next video.